Shelter Point Distillery originally started as a partnership involving Jay Odlison, an accountant who had worked in the wine and resort business, Andrew Curry, founder of the Aaron Distillery in Scotland, and Patrick Evans, a third generation farmer and owner of the site that was previously known as the UBC Experimental Farm. Eventually, Patrick Evans took full ownership and control of the business with the help of another farmer and colleague, James Marinas. They have a one-ton mash ton with five fermentation vessels. They had the famous Scottish Forsyth build them a 5,000 liter wash still and a 4,000 liter spirit still that had to be shipped over from Scotland. They have a visiting center as well as a spirit testing room. Nelson Investments is now the new owner of the Shelter Point Distillery. James Marinas is still involved in the business as their master distiller. Shelter Point is located on the east coast of Vancouver Island, 140 kilometers north of Nanaimo, halfway between Courtney and Campbell River. Well, welcome to Noel's World of Whiskey. And what have we got today? Well, something that I am a little ashamed to say, I have only uh, done one single malt in Canada here, <laughs> and that was this guy here. This Canadian single malt here, which is not the oldest, it's actually quite a young Canadian. It can't be called whiskey, that's how young it is. So, that was Macalonis, I think that was uh, Sorek Brosh, or Sorek Brock, pardon me, pronounce it right, Noel. This one is a gem that I found. Now I've known about uh, the uh, Glenora Distillery, or we'll call it Glen Breton, that got into that infamous lawsuit with the uh, Scotch Whiskey Association that almost sunk this company financially. This is where the Scottish immigrants settled in Canada, and that's Cape Breton. They came over uh, back in the 1800s, when they were booted off the land uh, during the Clearances Act, and um, many years later, this became the uh, very first distillery, single malt distillery in North America. And this is a 14-year-old one. I'm looking forward to doing this, but first, I'm going to do the second single malt distillery to open in Canada, Shelter Point Distillery. And uh, I have a connection with this, and I live not that far from this distillery. And my connection is I actually worked before it became a distillery. It was the uh, UBC Experimental Farm. And I worked with a fellow by the name of Lauren, a uh, super nice guy. Um, we uh, we work doing uh, carpentry work, etc. Uh, just prior to um, it uh, being purchased, it was sold uh, by UBC, sold that uh, to, I believe it was Patrick Evans. So I think it was, I, I, there might have been an inter intermediate uh, seller. But anyways, um, this is the guy uh, bought by Patrick Evans. Not a huge amount of history to talk about with these distilleries because... They're basically young distilleries. So in 2005, uh, Patrick Evans, uh, he's a, he was a third generation farmer, um, he ended up purchasing the land uh, around the UBC farm. And um, it's about 380 acres of farmland. And it, it is, it's, it's a beautiful piece. It's right on the ocean. Uh, the farm runs along the ocean. And, um, you know, there's there's... You've got the Oyster River coming out there. There's streams. Uh, it is a beautiful area, and, and they talk about it here, and I will say it's uh, how they describe it. Basically, um, they've tried to leave it as natural as possible because it is a bit of a park area next to the, o uh, the Oyster River. Um, it hasn't been all cleared, and, of course, um, you've got uh, the sandy beaches uh, right you know, next to the farm there along the ocean, because it does run along the ocean. I have bicycled and hiked that many times, so it's, it's a beautiful spot. So in 2011, uh, Patrick Evans started his venture, uh, and he's growing barley. He thought, well, why don't we get a distillery going? So um, 
And they get, in 2011, they get started on the distillery. Now, there's a lot of stories about uh, what I've heard, aside from what I've read here. Um, the To get it going, they, these are not scotch distillers. These are not people that have deep roots in the, uh, you know, in the, um, we'll say the single malt distilling business. But they, they've learned a lot. And um, what they did was they did get a Mike Nicholson who also helped uh, Macaroni's a very experienced uh, master distiller worked for Diageo was with Lagavulin worked with 18 different distilleries 30 plus years in Scotland so uh, when he came down here and said he retired from that they got him to help them get the uh, distillery started which I think was a very smart idea and they've had to go back and get, you know, uh, assistance when they've run into problems uh, because there is a learning curve to learning the distilling business. Plus, there's a learning curve to learning how to operate these Forsyth stills, these beautiful Forsyth stills. They're m one of the most famous companies in the world is Forsyth. They build the majority of your your pot stills around the planet and uh, so they actually had those brought over from Scotland and uh, now I've been I go down to that distillery I cycle by it I I have been in it but I have never really done the tour I'm embarrassed to say but I'm planning on doing it but I thought you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a um, I'm gonna do, re do a review of this and maybe the next time around we'll have a little tour of the distillery. So how does that sound? But anyways, uh, um, this, it, it appears, I haven't got all the details, I'll find out more about it, but it appears that uh, uh, the business itself has been taken over by Nelson Investments. Anyways, that's enough for now on it. The second distillery in Canada, and one close to home, and for some reason, I have never toured it, but my daughters have. <laughs> And so have my relatives when they come down here. Uh, is there an explanation? I'm too busy cycling or too busy uh, skiing or out on the water, paddleboard. I don't know. Anyways, so let's, um, let's open this guy up. And let's check out. Now this, there's, there's some other interesting things about this distillery. Um, it uh, is the first... Canadian distillery, and it just happened that it, it, the uh, Scotch Whiskey Society uh, has made it an official member. And now I think some of the members of the uh, the group now James uh, Marina said worked for Patrick Evans for oh I forget a good number of years, and he is the head distiller. So um, he's working with the new company here, Nelson investments there so but anyways um, let's uh, let's see what James Marinas can do here or let's just see what the crew at Shelter Point can do and I, I believe my understanding is Patrick Evans daughters also work there so um, not really a, a true cork but I guess uh, as long as it works I don't, uh, I'm not going to show you this one here, so we'll get this up close to the, let you take a good look at it there. Naturally colored, 46% ABV. There you are. And uh, here's the cork. Special occasion here, <laughs> so I have decided to um, use my Trudeau glass. We're here in Canada, pouring a Canadian single malt. And this can be called single malt. Uh, whiskey because uh, it is over three years old. Remember Mac Colonies was the one that they had Dr. Swan help them learn how to age their whiskey faster. So theirs was not quite three years, so they could not call it whiskey. In Canada, we have to three years uh, in, a, in a cask in Canada uh, to be called Canadian whiskey. So we know this is over... Uh, three years. My understanding is six-ish, six to eight years, something like that, is what my understanding is. So, anyways, um, interesting how that cork goes on. It, it's a shallow, as you, you saw a picture of it, it's a shallow cork, and there's only a little bit that kind of 
Anyways, I don't know. If it works, it works. So, do we have enough in there to... Yeah, we got enough. Let's give it the nose. Oh, I'm going to say that this is, uh, this is wood. It's like a little caramel notes there, caramel uh, toffee. Ooh, we're getting some of that, uh, I always like to use the, the Scottish Macintosh toffee. We get some cereal notes. Biscuit, sweet biscuit. Almost that Pillsbury dough biscuit. Uh, when you when you throw the, the when I was young, we used to put the Pillsbury uh, dough in the oven and make the biscuits and that. We start get a little bit of that with the butter and maybe a little bit of honey on it. Lots of honey in this area, and that's what I'm getting here in the glass. And some cinnamon. Yeah, it's got a pretty pretty. Pretty decent nose. I mean, we're getting obviously we're getting some uh, some of the uh, the wood, and um, you know I remember this is naturally colored, and I thought it was doing okay for color. So let's uh, maybe give it a little swirl there and um, see what happens uh, with the glass here. So I, with the Trudeau glass, I'm not too sure how much we're going to get for legs here. So we'll we're going to hold it to the side. And I'm going to hold it a little bit of a distance here, just see if we do a little better. But it gives you a chance to see the color. Okay, so, uh, I think we're going to do the palette. You notice I'm all excited here. I, I'm, it's, it's a Canadian single malt. I, the first one I did was uh, Mac Colonies, and I wasn't as excited. You remember, I, but later on, I was rather impressed with the final product. But this is going to be interesting, because this one here is actually a single malt. So... The palette, Canadian single malt whiskey. Spicy. Wood is uh, interesting. The wood's quite interesting here. What are they using? Are they using a mix of uh, bourbon, casts, and European oak? I'm going to have to find out. I'll be talking to them, but I uh, I did a little bit of research. Didn't get a lot. I got more on their newer uh, bottles because this one here is called uh, this is just called the uh, Shelter Point Single Malt Whiskey, and they've got a whole bunch of pr different presentations. I wanted to get their basic malt. That this is the one that really got got it all started. It's won awards, by the way. It has won uh, several awards uh, in, in Canadian Best Canadian Whiskey, and I think it did a San Francisco. It uh, won an award there, World Whiskey Awards, Best Canadian Single Malt, um, World Spirits Competition. It did a double gold. So th th this is done okay. It's, it's done. So I I mentioned um, honey uh, more so than vanilla. Um, more of a clover honey, by the way. And those spices, I'm man, we got some good, they're hot spices there, and I'm getting pepper and nutmeg and maybe a wee bit of ginger. Nice coating on the tongue and in the mouth. Um, there is a wee bit of, um, all sorts of licorice coming on there, and um, uh, the fruits are more um, ah ripe. I'd say ripe uh, pears. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna go for the finish. Yeah, we're gonna speed her up. <laughs> <clears throat> the finish. Definitely going to be a short medium finish on this one, right in between short medium. It has um, nice coating.
I'm going to say we're getting also, I, I mentioned the, the hot spices, but we are getting uh, some hot ginger. Definitely hot ginger to this. And let's give it some water. And we'll see what the water does. 46%, it should take a little bit. And um, whoo, that's nice. So now we're getting something more like a. It's like a that the the fifteen year old Van Catum. It's got. Um, I'm getting. Um, I'm getting the pears and the apples. Maybe some apricots even. And um, the sweet the, the sweetness is still there, honey. It's it's really opened it up. I can spend a little time here with the nose. This seems to have really helped in the water. Boy, really, man, it's really, it's, I'm even getting some, um, I'm getting some marmalade. You know that, the three, the three fruit marmalade? The, um, the, um, orange grapefruit, um, lemon? Yeah, nice. Okay, with water, the palate. Oh boy, it's just amazing what water can do. Now, I'm getting a little bit of vanilla with the honey. I kicked the those real hot spices. I've sort of kicked them in the pants there, and now I'm getting um, uh, that nice cinnamon and ginger that I like and even some baking spices still getting the malt and um, more of a granola thing I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is between an 82 and an 83 I'm gonna give it an 83 uh, it's a non-age statement uh, young distillery but one of the second oldest in Canada and I say young in in, in relative to uh, scotch distilleries um, it ha does have some more aged uh, casks, but this being a non-aged statement, 46% uh, ABV, uh, no color added, uh, it's a tasty malt, and it's, it's worthy of an 83, and I am recommending it. And uh, if you get a chance for the price, you know, I think I, I had this on sale, $74, somewhere in that range there. I think it's around 78 at uh, BCL. Uh, the liquor stores, uh, the um, I think uh, the uh, Brooks Landing, uh, Lucky's down in Nanaimo, you'll find it there. Uh, certainly at the Strath and uh, you know other private stores in, in, in uh, Vancouver Island, all over BC, in fact. So uh, it is well distributed. So let's leave it at an 83. Um, I'm going to ask you to drink wisely, drink intelligently. Do not drink and drive. Until the next time, so much.